Have a look at the data on the left. What do all these images have in common? They were all generated using conjugated antibodies. I'm Jeremy, senior scientist in the antibody conjugation group at Cell Signaling Technology, and this is CST Tech Tips. Many immunoassays incorporate antibody conjugates, which are antibodies directly cross-linked to labels such as fluorescent dyes or proteins, enzymes, beads, or DNA. These labels can enable the readout of the assay, multiplexed readouts, or a shorter experimental protocol. If you decide your experiment requires an antibody conjugate, you'll be looking through your lab's inventory and searching the web to make a shopping list of antibody conjugates that react to the proteins you're interested in. So let's say that you find an unconjugated antibody clone shown to be specific for your target, meaning the validation data was generated in your application of interest using a relevant biological model. One might assume that the conjugates of the same clone would have the same specificity and performance. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. Before we explore why, I wanna take a quick second to mention CellMentor.com, a resource for scientists from Cell Signaling Technology and Cell Press. There you'll find more tech tip videos, plus career and publishing insights from scientists who have been in your shoes, and, can sign, and you can sign up for a monthly email newsletter. We'll put a link in the description below this video. And while you're there, give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Okay, now let's consider why a conjugated antibody might perform differently from its unconjugated version. In this video, I'll focus on examples of antibodies that are conjugated to fluorescent dyes for use in immunocytochemistry, flow cytometry, or other assays with fluorescent readouts. The validation principles I'll describe here also apply to other types of conjugates, such as antibodies coupled to biotin, beads, or enzymes such as HRP. The conjugation reaction involves direct covalent modification of the amino acid side chains in the antibody. Various coupling chemistries are available that form a stable covalent bond between the antibody and the desired label. In this case, a fluorescent dye. Two of the most commonly used chemistries, succinamidyl ester and melamine, will target amino and thiol groups respectively. Unfortunately, conjugation also has the potential to alter the antibody structure or disrupt its function meaning the antibody-antigen interactions could be affected. There's also the potential for increased off-target binding and lower stability. The impact on specificity, performance, and stability is highly dependent on the antibody, the label, and the conjugation chemistry. That's why it's important to scrutinize the conjugates on your list to look for validation testing performed in the assay or application you'll be using and not rely solely on data from the unconjugated version of the antibody. The example on the right shows an antibody conjugated with APC that failed to perform in flow cytometry compared to the unconjugated phosphostat 5 antibody detected with a secondary in the left panel. This particular APC conjugated antibody failed our validation testing and was not released as a product. Fortunately, by switching to a different fluorophore, phycoerythrin, we were able to produce a phosphostat 5 antibody conjugate that passed our validation testing. And remember, for both conjugates and non-conjugates, validation performed in one type of immunoassay, such as Western blot, is not sufficient to validate its performance in a different assay, such as immunocytochemistry. Thanks for watching. If you found this video informative, share it with a colleague and take a second to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time, and good luck with your experiments.